Dear members of the press, in the, after, in the immediate aftermath of the nuclear accidents, it is the established procedure to distribute stable iodine to the population in an attempt to block the uptake of radioactive iodine in those exposed to it, thereby reducing the risk of thyroid cancer. I regret to note that the government neither gave instructions nor distributed stable iodine to the affected population. Nonetheless, some municipalities distributed stable iodine tablets in an ad hoc manner. Any disaster, in particular a man-made disaster, like the nuclear accident, puts the credibility of the government into question. It is therefore crucial that the government provide accurate information and evacuate people from areas of contamination. However, it is regrettable that the radiation dosage information through speedy and the movement of the radioactive plume was not immediately communicated to the public. Moreover, evacuation zones were imposed on the basis of geographical distance from the site of disaster and the footprint of the radioactive plume, rather than the actual radiation dos dosage. Initial evacuation zones therefore neglected hot spots. Furthermore, the government used threshold level of 20 millisievert per year for designation of evacuation zones. This conveyed the message that effective radiation dose of up to 20 millisievert a year was safe. It was further aggravated by government's release of a number of publications, including school booklets, informing the public that there was no clear evidence of the direct risk of cancer if a person was exposed to radiation dose of up to 100 millisievert per year. The threshold level of 20 millisievert a year is in contrast to the statutory limit, legal limit imposed by the 1972 Industrial Safety Regulation for the nuclear industry. For workers at a nuclear power plant, the maximum limit of exposure in the controlled area prescribed by the law is 20 millisievert per year, not exceeding 15 millisievert per year, and a cumulative dose of 100 millisievert in five years. The law prohibits the entry of ordinary citizens into the controlled area with a radiation dose of 1.3 milli, millisievert a quarter and further prohibits workers to eat, drink or sleep in that area. It also prohibits pregnant women to be exposed to radiation dose in a controlled area of over 2 millisievert a year. I would like to recall that in Chernobyl, the threshold limit for obligatory resettlement was 5 millisievert a year or above, apart from soil contamination levels. There are also a significant number of epidemiological studies which indicate that cancer and other diseases could occur in low dose radiation below 100 millisievert per year. According to these studies, there is no low threshold limit for the occurrences of diseases. It is unfortunate that inconsistency between the current limits imposed by policy on the one hand and the limits prescribed by the industrial safety regulation in Japan, radiation limits used in Chernobyl and the findings in the epidemiological studies on the other hand has created confusion among a significant number of local population who increasingly doubt government data and policy. This is further compounded by the fact that radiation monitoring stations do not reflect the varied dosage levels in the area in close proximity. As a result, local residents are carrying out their own monitoring of radiation dosages in their neighborhoods. During the visit, I was shown ample data indicating the variance. In the circumstances, I would like to urge the government to incorporate all validated independent data, including those from residents, and make them publicly available. Ladies and gentlemen, According to the right to health, the government should monitor the impact of radiation on people's health in radiation-affected zone through holistic and comprehensive screening and provide appropriate treatment. In this regard, I am pleased to note that the government has undertaken a health management survey. However, the health management survey is limited to the residents of and visitors to the Fukushima prefecture at the time of the disaster. I would urge the government to expand health survey to all radiation affected zones. Pertinently, the response rate to the questionnaire of the Fukushima Health Survey was only about 23%, which is considerably low. Moreover, 
health checkups are limited to thyroid examination for children, comprehensive health checkup, mental and lifestyle survey, and pregnancy and birth survey. The scope of surveys is unfortunately narrow as they draw on the limited lessons from Chernobyl accident and ignore epidemiological studies that point to cancer as well as other diseases in low dose radiation even in areas of exposure below 100 millisievert per year. Following the right to health framework, I would encourage the government to err on the side of caution and carry out comprehensive studies which would entail examining and monitoring of internal radiation exposure for a considerable length of time. I am concerned about reports received from residents whose children underwent thyroid examination and whose results detected the presence of cysts and or nodules below the threshold size under the protocol. Accordingly, those parents were neither allowed to obtain a second examination nor given medical papers on demand, in effect denying them the right to access their own medical documentation. Unfortunately, they are required to undergo a cumbersome Re Freedom of Information Act procedure to obtain these documents. The government also needs to pay special attention to the monitoring of the effects of radiation dosage on nuclear plant workers, some of whom were exposed to extremely high dosage of radiation. I was distressed to learn that there is a practice of employing a large number of contract workers through a layer of subcontractors. A significant number of them are employed for short periods of time with no effective long-term monitoring of their health after their employment contracts are terminated. I call upon the government to look into this and ensure that no workers who have been exposed to radiation are left without monitoring and or treatment. Dear members of the press, I am pleased to note that the government has made arrangements for the evacuees either through temporary shelters or subsidized accommodation. However, I learned from residents that emergency evacuation centers did not provide accessible environment for the people with disabilities or appropriate conditions for women with young children. It is tragic that evacuation of residents following the nuclear accident has caused painful separations in families, leading to separation between husband and wife, and the wife and children, as well as from the elderly. This has led to disharmony, discord, and in some cases even divorce, leading to distress and mental health concerns. The government should address these important issues urgently. Radioactive contamination of food is a long-term issue. I commend the government for reducing the threshold for food safety from 500 becquerels a kilogram to 100 becquerels a kilogram. However, individual prefectures have imposed lower threshold levels. Moreover, residents have raised concerns about the enforcement of the standards. The government should strengthen the enforcement of food safety in an urgent manner. I am pleased to note that the government is carrying out soil decontamination activities with specific policy targets to reduce radiation levels in areas less than 20 millisieverts to 1 millisieverts per year as a long-term goal, as well as in areas from 20 to 50 millisieverts to reduce the exposure dose to less than 20 millisieverts a year by the end of 2013. I regret to note that there is no fixed timeline to reduce the radiation in the area where the current radiation level is less than 20 millisievert a year to the level of 1 millisievert a year. It is also unfortunate that in other areas the decontamination target is much higher than 1 millisievert a year. The residents are entitled to live in a safe and healthy environment. I therefore urge the government to adopt an action plan with clear timelines, indicators and benchmarks for decontamination to reduce radiation levels to one millisievert a year for other areas. I was pleased to learn that decontamination is done by workers, is to be done by workers who are to be hired specifically for this purpose. However, it is regrettable that some decontamination activities are carried out by residents themselves without proper equipment or information about the harmful effects of radiation exposure. In the meantime, I encourage the government to continue and or restore financial support and subsidies to all evacuees so they can make a voluntary decision to evacuate or return to their homes if they wish to do so.
This will also help build confidence amongst the evacuees in the government's plans. During my visit, a number of people shared with me their apprehension that TEPCO is not being held accountable for its responsibility for the nuclear accident. The government's major shareholding in TEPCO has meant the taxpayer may foot the bill ultimately. The Right to Health Framework provides for accountability of those actors who are not liable for committing who are liable for committing actionable wrongs. The government should therefore ensure that TEPCO is also held accountable and that taxpayers are not foisted with that eventual liability. Ladies and gentlemen, members of the press, during the visit I have also heard from the affected residents and particularly from such groups as persons with disabilities, young mothers and pregnant women, children and older persons, that they have had no say in the decisions that affect them. The Right to Health Framework requires the state to ensure the participation of all communities in decisions that affect them. This means that the affected people need to be part of the decision-making process as well as, as well as of the implementation, monitoring and accountability processes. Participation would not only inform decisions holistically but also build the confidence of the affected community in the government. This is also necessary in restoring normalcy after the disaster in an effective manner. I urge the government to ensure that the affected people, particularly the vulnerable groups, are fully involved in all decision-making processes. This should include their participation, among others, in the formulation of health management service, designing of evacuation shelters, and implementation of decontamination. In this respect, I welcome the enactment of the Act on Protection and the support for the children and other victims of the TEPCO disaster in June 2012, which provides for a framework for the support and care to the people who were affected by the nuclear accident. The Act has not been implemented yet. I urge the government to take urgent measures to implement the Act. It is a good opportunity for the government to frame the basic policy and subordinate regulations with the full participations of all the affected communities, including vulnerable groups. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you.